Welcome back to my little podcast thing. I pretty much forgot the name already. It's, oh, Knit and Spin with Brie, and which is me. One thing that I noticed in my previous episode is that I did not talk loud enough. I felt like I was mumbling a lot. So I'm gonna try not to do that anymore. So, I have a few things that I've been working on and have started. Oh, and I got my entries for that fleece show that I was saying last time. I got the ribbons back and the skeins back and the sweater that I have over here, uh, which I made for my mom. When I say my mom, I mean my mother-in-law. I just recently lost my my mom um, this past September, uh, but me and my mother-in-law have are have been very close since I started dat dating my husband now. Um, but I just I call her mom. So if I say mom, I mean her. So anyway, this is a sweater that I knit for my mom. It's out of all of my own hand spun yarn from her alpaca farm, Rockstar Alpacas. It's all her fiber. The brown is from brown sugar. Um, and there's like a little bit of duchess at the bottom. I don't know if you can actually see the color difference. Apparently the judge that was judging it, she actually liked that and I thought I was gonna get dinged for it, but apparently I didn't. She was just like, what a cute little touch. It was a completely different um, alpaca that was from the one at the bottom, but the main body and like the sleeves and everything are all from Brown Sugar's Fiber, who's a lovely like chocolate brown alpaca, which my mom doesn't have anymore. But, and then the bluish color work on this is, um, a hand blend that I did from uh, Bijou, who is a black alpaca, a true black. I blended her with silk and um, faux cashmere, and it lightened up the color to like a gray, and then uh, I applied it with a blue silk, which brightened it to more of a blue. But this took second place in the um, hand knits event for garments and I was just astonished. <laughs> I was over the moon about it. I can actually read you what the judges actually wrote. So I got an 85 out of 100, which is actually really not that bad. Um, they did say that it was very dense and the light blue shows the pattern against the brown very well. Uh, which is the color work design and it is very dense so when I hand spun it I spun all of the yarn at different times which if you're a hand spinner yourself your yarn changes if you don't spin everything in like one set period of time so the weights on all of the yarn that I spun for this ended up being different 
and the yarn that I used for the sleeves were much older spun and it's like <laughs> I want to say it's a bulky weight this is supposed to be a fingering weight sweater I used a bulky weight on the sleeves so they are and I used the same like needles and I didn't gauge up the needles because you know gauge swatching I just don't do that it's like what's the point I I feel like gauge swatching I don't do it because I think it's a waste of yarn even though I know the importance and I know how good it is to do that, I don't because I think it's a waste of yarn. Eventually I will because I'll learn my lesson one day, which, you know, I did, but my mom loves it anyway. So the sleeves are really heavy and like super thick. Uh, but yeah, it's, it turned out really lovely and it got second place and I was very proud of that. Another one that I got back is this ooh, brioche hat. So I learned how to do brioche like at this point, two months ago, I took a class for basic brioche from Fiber Circle Studio in Petaluma. I'm going to tag them underneath because uh, Alicia is amazing. She owns the store and she does great classes, which I actually just recently visited last weekend. Um, her store is beautiful. She just moved locations, but it's beautifully displayed. She has yarn from her own personal dye line and then also from many other makers, local. <sighs> anyway, I will tag her on this because I think that she has great options and she's a beautiful maker and I hope to be very good friends with her because I need more of those. Anyway, so I learned just a basic brioche cowl from her class and then I was really wanted to try movement brioche is what she called it, but it's where you can see a design within the brioche. And so I, it wasn't this pattern, this is actually my second um, brioche hat. The first one, I'll put in a picture. It, I ended up making it within a day and I even had to rip out the entire thing and redo it. And I still finished it within a day because it's a lot like color work. Like, you it's like popcorn thing I don't know you just like you get into it you get into a rhythm and then you just like blow past even though it's supposed to take less time or more time because you have to do two rounds with each color in order to technically have completed one round but so I did this one this after I did the other hat with my mom's white alpaca yarn that she had commercially spun and then a her vet also has a alpaca ranch and her true blacks so i did it as a very high contrast with the white and the black and alpaca is very it has a halo i don't know if you can tell that it's like super fuzzy but it has a halo um Kind of like how mohair does or brush surrey alpaca does uh but it's super soft really fine and it was a blast to knit i wrote down the pattern somewhere it's let's see sorry excuse the delay okay Le Velou is the pattern by Melina Hami. I'll put it in the description. But yeah, it's a nice little beret. It's a fingering weight and it's really, it's a beautifully constructed pattern. And now that I'm looking at the brim, I wanted to actually bring up that I was watching a podcast two days ago 
woolly witchcraft and brogan is the host of that and she's from scotland and she's amazing but she just recently ha she had a uh, episode where she had realized that she was purling wrong her entire knitting journey until recently when i saw it i'm just like oh maybe am, am i purling wrong so I had to look it up right when I was watching it, and I have also been purling wrong this whole time. I've been knitting since I was four. I mean, not like big projects. I only just recently got into like sweaters and stuff because before, from age four till I want to say like 12, I was only knitting garter stitch scarves, and that's pretty much it. There was like no patterns i was just knitting scarves but i just recently this last year got back into knitting like deep dive but yeah i've been uh purling wrong and so when i was doing the short rows for the brim of this hat to have it a little bit longer on the top um the top part that goes a bit here more on your forehead you can see all the twisted purl stitches and it, I think it's noticeable. The judge didn't notice at all. She gave me a 97 out of 100. And she said that the high, contrast, the high contrast showcases your skills in this well-constructed hat. Not bad for learning brioche like two months ago, but I thought she was totally gonna look at this and be like, what's going on with those uh, pearl stitches? Apparently, but yes, I've been doing them wrong. I have now corrected that. It takes a lot of con concentration to correct something like that when you've been doing it for so long. But anyway, thank you, Brogan. Me and her are like friends now because I messaged her and she responded. So we're like BFFs. Not really, I'm sorry. <laughs> Sounds super stalkery. We're not. But we're talking and I'm making new friends, which I am so lovely so happy about so lovely wow anyway so i figured i'd go through all of my works in progress i haven't finished anything since last episode but i did want to share the things that i got back from the alpaca show works in progress okay last week i showed you my other sweater that I was knitting for my mom with all of her my hand spun gray alpaca fiber from her farm rockstar alpacas and I had almost finished the body I have now since finished the body and I started one sleeve I ran out of this ball of yarn and I only have one ball of yarn left so I figured oh, I'll just stop on this sleeve start on the other sleeve work all the way down and then do the color work and see how much I have left of my last skein uh, I think I'll have enough I certainly hope so it's like I spun like 1200 yards for this a fingering weight yarn for this sweater so I'm fingers crossed. I hope I don't have to dip into one of the cones of gray of also her alpaca, but this is commercially spun. It's not hand spun, which makes it a little less special. But yeah, I added the color work at the bottom. It's not in the original pattern from Jennifer Steingass. What was this one? It again I'll put it in if you saw last week episode I did say what pattern this was I'm drawing a blank but yeah it looks nice love how it worked out I did a tubular bind off at the bottom so the rib stitches kind of just fall off in the distance 
but I like how it finished. It's very stretchy and nice. Another thing, so this one has in my Disney project bag, I want to say this is from Lila Styles, who is a um, big project bag maker on Etsy. I'll link it or put it in the little thingy. Uh, but it also came with like a little chapstick holder. My, I am obsessed with Disney, so I had to have it. And it has all of the Disney snacks in the theme parks and stuff. And there's a little progress keeper and it's Tinkerbell. Anyway, in this bag, I haven't worked on these in a really long time, but I am making some socks. And this was the, this is the first, no, this is the second time I've done a heel flop and gusset. I started doing, what is it? German short row heel for socks. I've only made four pairs of socks. My, my mom, mom was super into knitting socks and I was never into it. And she's just like, you should try it. You should try it. It's actually really fun. They're really quick knit. And it wasn't until after she passed, I actually started knitting socks. But my very first sock that I finished um, was buried with her. Um, and I was out of some of her stash yarn that she had, so. But I've made two full pairs since then and started this pair, finished one, because the other ones I did two at a time. I, will, I did one at a time with this one because you can do the German short row heel two at a time and keep them all on the same needle. But with heel flap and gusset, you have to transfer it to a different needle. So that's why I haven't been on this one. I should really check if it's still even recording. I don't even know if the button worked. Hold, please. Oh God, I'm on the floor. <laughs> I'll edit that little bit out, but yes, it's recording. So yeah, I have the one done. Um, and I, I'm this far on the second one. This is so sad. But I'm planning on knitting my two boys um, some socks in this colorway which is just a Hobby Lobby, um, their own hand-dyed merino yarn that they did, uh, which is, it's still really nice, but I wouldn't call it a fingering way. I would say it's a light fingering. It's very fine, um, but it's, it's nice. So I have that going with socks anyway. I have my other pair of socks in my room. I'm not going to go grab them to show you because there's just a, was it Pantone's? No, that's, that's paint. Uh, I'll put it in, but it's just like those little tiny little 50 grain, 50 grain, wow, 50 gram balls of like self-striping or self-patterning yarn, um, that you get from Michael's or whatever. I can't believe I'm blanking on the name. It's like, it starts with a P. Another thing I've been working on that I recently cast on that I'm super excited about, it was my best friend's birthday on the 22nd and I wished her happy birthday and I let her know that I'm going to be making her something. And Hannah, if you're watching, look away. But I'm going to be making her Dreaming in a Field of Wildflowers shawl uh, by Lisa Hennes. And I am really digging how this shawl is working up. I hand dyed all the yarn for it, uh, except I bought the mohair 
I have never worked with mohair before and so I bought a couple skeins of mohair while I was at Fiber Circle Studios in Petaluma which is two and a half hours from me but I wanted to go there I had never been uh, but this the mohair that I got is in a 25 gram skein 230 yards from Le Petit Silk Mohair from Biches and Bouches? Biche, Biche and Bouche, I think is what it is. I think it's a French thing. But I got it in the off-white color. Never worked with mohair. It sheds like a cat. So while I'm working with it, I have like little fuzzies all over me. I love the effect that it has, but I finished the first section of the main, so this, I guess the center triangle, and I've started on the lace. Wow, I'm holding it the wrong direction. Um, but I just started, was I? Yeah, no, this way. But I start on the lace panel going out that way and then another lace panel will be going out the other way and then repeating colors. So I recently just hand dyed this yarn for it and I had my friend Hannah in mind when I was doing it. So when I named colorways, I was thinking of her. So this first colorway is called B and B Sandwich, which stands for Brook and Bree Sandwich. Me and my sister were twins and we'd been best friends with Hannah since we were in kindergarten and we would always stand on either side of her and it just became a B&B &B sandwich. But the next one, the next colorway, which is kind of like a faded blend of, between the blue and the purpley pink is, I called it that one time in karaoke that one time at karaoke um, and that refers to I I didn't go but my sister and Hannah went and lots of drinking and let's just say that they don't really remember how it ended but I named it <laughs> that's the second colorway and the last colorway is just one of those days um, and it's just a mixture of blues um, that I enjoy because she said that her colors that she likes is like purple and blue. So I try to kind of fade it into a purpley, pinky, blue thing. And I've been knitting on this since Sunday. I dyed the colors on Sunday and I cast it on on, on Sunday night but I've already finished the center triangle and I'm working on the lace right now. Kind of popcorn knitting. The lace is kind of difficult to follow, but I'm, I'm getting it. And that's all I'm working on right now. Um, I do have a lot of finished objects that are old that I kind of wanted to talk about. Kind of my 2020 finished items um, before I got into like super knitting like my first sweater that I made and all that I have these in completely the wrong order but let's start with before I started knitting I crocheted a lot and I made swimsuit covers out of cotton yarn um, and this is I wrote down the pattern because Sea Breeze Cover Up by Katarina Designs it's on Ravelry I made this one I made one for my sister I made one for my best friend her two sisters and her mom and we all wore them when we went to Tahoe together at, in July last year. 
and we were all so super cute. I don't have a picture of us all wearing them, but they're all in different like fade cotton yarns that I got from Hobby Lobby. I think, yeah. But I really liked how they turned out. I'm planning on making one for my husband's aunt and then also my mother-in-law so that we can all just have one for when we go vacationing. I'll insert pictures of the other ones that I did because I think I did take pictures of those. Also, another crocheted item that I finished uh, last year. Actually, I want to say 2019, like around Christmas time. So I got this Karen brand uh, latte yarn in I think the colorway is Earl Grey but I made a sweater dress out of it because it's it's really soft it is fully acrylic it was before I knew the ways of actual animal fibers but it's very soft and I haven't actually like blocked this because it's indeed very heavy so it kind of blocked itself and I figured out if you block acrylic yarn it doesn't go back you pretty much kill it and it just grows so <coughs> excuse me so I didn't block it it's already very long just from hanging in my closet so it goes to about my knees but this only took me about three days to crochet. I, and it's like a bulky weight. I crochet very quickly and I really enjoyed it, but you can see, where is it? There, because you go in a circle, there's like an offset of when you, like beginning of round, it like goes diagonally across here, I think which I notice, no one else notices, but I notice and I don't like it. Again, there was no pattern to that. I kind of just made it up. I was measuring around like what would be the yoke and then how fast the increase is around this, in, like a raw raglan. Uh, so I just kind of made it up. Also, uh, wow, this got a lot bigger just hanging in my closet. I know you're not supposed to hang them because they stretch that way. But this is also a acrylic yarn, so I'm not too miffed about it. I made this one out of, oh, I can't even remember. It's not, I can't remember. It's like one of those, the pound of love. And I don't know if that's the lion brand or red heart brand. And it's in like a red heather, but this is crocheted and it's this, the stitch is called the Jasmine stitch. And I found a video on how to do this particular sweater off of Pinterest. And when I clicked on it and I watched the video, the video is all in French. And I was able to count like the yoke stitches around um, while she was doing it without needing to actually understand what she was saying. But yeah, and then I finished it and I have never worn it. <laughs> It's very holy, you obviously have to wear something underneath it, but I haven't had occasion to wear it because it gets quite warm while I'm wearing any of like my sweater dress items. Okay, now we're gonna go into my actual hand knits. Oh no.
This is my first sweater I ever finished. It's my first sweater I ever knit. It's Jennifer Steingast, um, Garden Gate. And I cast it on last July. And I knit, like, I cast it on on the 1st of July, I think. And I was knitting it on the car ride up to Tahoe with my best friend and her family. And I got through the color work really fast. This is Yarn Bee from Hobby Lobby. Uh, soft and sleek, I want to say. It's acrylic, obviously, because it grew like a million yards as I was steam blocking it like a dummy. But this was not supposed to be how big it was. The body's super big and then the sleeves are actually really tight. So I don't know what that's about. Yeah, the sleeves, you can see the sleeves aren't very wide, but the armpit is like, I don't know, probably at my hip if I wore it. It's nice though, I like it. I, I use it as a reminder that I could do color work and I can make sweaters. I just need to use the right yarn and I need to do correct blocking techniques, I guess, for the type of yarn that I have. My second sweater, which I want to kind of shout out um, Caroline from, what does she call her podcast? I haven't seen it in a really long time, but it's, she's Dunderknit on Ravelry. And I think also on Instagram. Man, what is it? It's like knitting for yourself or selfish knitting or something like that. I'll put it in. Why am I even like floundering about it? But I'll put it in. She had made the Siri cardigan. It's on Ravelry. Can't tell you who designed it, but this is the second sweater I knit. And I just, I love the twisted stitch pattern on the yoke for like these leaf designs. It is originally a cardigan. I did modify it to be a pullover because I like knitting in the round. I don't like purling at all. And I did exactly what Caroline did. She did a rolled over uh, neckline. And then also I did a rolled over uh, bottom hem line as well. But it took me forever to figure out how I, I was gonna be good and do a gauge swatch for the pattern. And I couldn't figure it out and somehow all of my stitch counts were getting really off and I wasn't casting on the right amount or I was casting on too much. And I, so I kept like trying to reach out to all of the people that have made it before, asking them like, are the stitch counts wrong? What's going on? Uh, eventually I figured it out. I was just, it was the first time I've read a chart before as well in, in just like regular, not a color work chart. That one's kind of easy to read, but where it was like the symbols of like knit two together, or like twisted stitch or cables or whatever. It was the first time I've read one of those and I kept reading the, this is not a stitch as a stitch, which makes it confusing. But good thing I figured that out. But yeah, there's my Siri pull. This is my first one I made. I also made another one for my aunt. I will put that, a picture of that that I finished as well. This is my third, third sweater I made. Um, I made this right after my mom passed away. Me and my dad went to the local yarn store in Santa Cruz, uh, the Swift Stitch, and they had, I have the, obviously a different colorway, but this, this colorway is called 
Oh. Pressed flowers from Western Sky Knits. Hand dyed in Montana. And it's on their Merino 17 Light, which I assume is 17 Micron because it is so soft. Oh, goodness. <sighs> so I got a sweater quantity of that and then I decided I also wanted to try my hand in lace. So I did a lace yoke sweater. And it has like mini cables too. I need to properly block this. I just recently got like the, the blocking comb pins. I just washed this and laid it flat. I didn't like actually block it so that the lace is nice and visible. But this is also very soft. I keep knitting my bodies too short. I measure, I swear I measure it and it always ends up being too short. I guess my, like I, from my underarm to my hip, which is where I like it, I don't like cropped things. And I would measure that and then I'd measure from the underarm of like where the sleeve meets the body to the hem. And it's the same measurement, but it's like, I don't know. I think it's probably because I'm just a little bit chunkier now. So it's rides up. I guess. <coughs> I wanted to try my hand in bottom up designs, but I wasn't going to do a full on sweater with like sleeves and stuff. So I was like, I'll do a tank top. And I did this one. And this one's called the Golden Oak Tank Top from Amanita. McKewitz. I'll put it in the spelling. But it has like a nice lace leaf pattern at the bottom. I made this out of my hand dyed. Sorry, my husband is walking by. My own hand dyed roving that I then spun. And it's a Polworth silk blend, but it kind of looks like a sunset on the beach or the water, ocean. But I love how it turned out. It's kind of like a bulkier weight. I thought I spun it for like a fingering weight and clearly was not. But I love it. It's kind of cropped. It fits nicely. I also need to properly block this one with the, the combs and everything so that you can see the detail of the rib twisted stitch lines and the leaves at the bottom. But I love knitting this one so much that I made another one that just fell off the hanger. That took me like a day to make. So I made another one, which was made because it was super easy and fast knit. And I also need to block this one because it's, <laughs> this one turned out significantly smaller because it was the correct gauge or the correct size weight yarn. And I did not make the correct size, but yeah. Also made it in a day. It was very easy, it's very lightweight, and if it's too hot outside, you just put on a tank top. The straps got, kinda got long, but, and it's tight because I need to actually lock it. It is, I, again, I washed it and laid it flat to dry. That was all I did. Did not stretch it in any way to, do anything important with it. Just moving these all back so I can hang them up. Okay. All right. So another thing that I did, when was it? Yesterday? I labeled all of my yarn that's in my Etsy shop 
actually not all of it's in my Etsy shop. I need to retake pictures with my yarn label on it and then um, update everything that's in my shop. I think that that might help with my popularity on Etsy. I keep paying for like Etsy ads to like market my store. It doesn't seem to work. I've only had one sale in since I opened it in January and it's July. So seven months. So I think that this will also be a good way to market myself. I'm a hand dyer. I sell my own hand dyed yarn as well as my own hand spun down here in my Etsy shop, Doodlebug Yarn Shop. And I labeled everything and I also named all the colorways. So I'm excited to post all of those because I just, I looked at the yarn, I'm like, anything that popped in my head, I wrote it down as the colorway name. Yeah, I am definitely excited to get those all out and are updated. Oh, I didn't tell you what the pattern was for the lace work sweater. That one was the Leora sweater by Valentina Bogdanova. But I'll write it down. I'm not gonna butcher her name. I'll write it in the thingy. Yeah, so. I did want to do some shout outs to some podcasters that I have reached out to and they have responded very nicely and welcomed me. Um, I did want to reach out, shout out to Hive Knits and Natters with Lizzie. She's just started just like me. She has three episodes out and she's just such a lovely person and I can see us getting along very well so I am excited to just talk with her more comment on her videos more but she's very sweet she responds to everything as I will too I will respond to any comments that are put on here or on the video I just think that my first episode was just garbage ish but I did say that it would be better this time, which I think it has been. Another shout out, I wanna say Wooly Witchcraft with Brogan, cause I have talked with her on Instagram and she agreed to be my friend. I know that sounds like super cheesy and sad like elementary school, but I need more fiber friends and she was more than willing to be one of my friends so I've been chatting with her and it's been really great another podcast I wanted to shout out is the knitting pickle uh, with Lauren I think the name's Lauren I'm pretty sure it's Lauren I'll correct it if I'm wrong um, but I just I love that in her podcast, she refers to like tickling her fancy, it, which is something that I guess is more common here, but she's from the UK and she says tickles my pickle <laughs> for tickling her fancy. Um, I, she's just adorable and she has, she has her kids and her job and her, or I think she's a stay at home mom. Ah, God, I get all of them confused now, but great lady, just amazing to watch, very entertaining. And also this Nanny Knits podcast with Lucy. She's also from the UK. She's very enjoyable. She's not nanny as in grandma. She is a nanny as in a child care provider which I want to 
hats off to her. Hats off to child care providers. I am more than willing to pay that amount now because I know what you have to deal with. Not that I didn't before, but 24 seven, it's, it can get very overwhelming as a parent, especially being cooped up and not being able to go anywhere. And having two boys that have a ridiculous amount of energy. So yeah, hats off to you, Lucy. I know you're great. I think that's all I have for this time. I don't have any spinning this time because I'm working on the same stuff that I was last time because I got really into this shawl. But yeah, hopefully I'll have a new skein of yarn to show you guys next time and maybe a finished shawl and maybe a finished sweater. We'll see. But I'll record another video next week as well. Well, it was nice chatting with you all, got all you guys. Not that anyone actually watches. I think I have seven views on my first video because it's garbage. But hopefully this one goes a little bit better. Alrighty then. I hope you guys have a good night and I will see you next time. Bye. Thank you.